Well, let's talk television technology because one of the biggest TV sellers in this country, if not the world, in fact, is Hisense. And they've just announced a new type of television format. Uh, this is their format for achieving those deeper blacks and colors that we've talked about in the past that may have been OLED TVs. Uh, that's a type of format, for example. This is what Hisense is doing this year. It's called Dual Cell. Uh, first time on CyberShack Live uh, from Hisense. He's joined us many times on our radio show uh, t and TV show before. We've walked the halls of big tech expos around the world with him. Uh, Chris from Hisense joins us today. How are you, Chris? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Doing well, thank you. Good to, uh, good to have a chat to you. Now, you're the go-to guy when we have these technical questions of Hisense that we need answering. So thank you for some time that you're giving us today. Um, Let's get into dual cell technology because you guys have done OLED TVs in the past, um, but it, what it appears is that this year, dual cell is how you're planning to achieve the deep black and high color, color contrast results for a premium television. Is that correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. So to that effect, we've actually discontinued our OLED TV and superseded it with our dual cell TV um, as a big statement from us at Hisense. So Chris, I guess the question we all want to understand first and foremost is what is uh, dual cell TVs and how do they differ from other TVs that we might see out there on the market? So dual cells big innovation is in the dual. Uh, there, are, there are two cells in this TV. So basically a normal TV, you've got the color layer, and then behind that, you've got the backlight system and whatever quantum dots and whatever things you wanna put in there to improve the color, um, but you only have that one color layer. And what that does mean is that there's a lot of light that gets through um, and causes uh, bleeding or halo effects that you may have seen on LED TVs. And this is why traditionally uh, a high sense LED, for example, has that super pitch black uh, darkness. So what we've done with dual cell is we put in a second layer, uh, which sits fused uh, to the first layer, now what that does is handle luminance. So it's a grayscale panel that doesn't represent any color, but what it does do is represent a gatekeeper between letting light through to the screen and blocking it away from the viewer. And that means we can get over 2 million dimming zones on our TV versus maybe a thousand um, on the leading uh, competitors TVs, which is pretty ridiculous. That means the resolution of four pixels to every dimming zone. We can trace around an object and just basically turn on what we need to turn on and turn off what we don't need to use, which is really, really cool. And the ultimate result, deeper blacks and better color uh, presentation on the screen, I imagine. Uh, yeah, so we've got black levels that are comparable to what you would expect from you know, our LED TV that we had last year. Um, and the benefit is we also have a thousand nits brightness and we have that color accuracy uh, and longevity that you would expect uh, from a QLED TV as well which is super, super important to bring both of those together. And are these hard to manufacture? Because I, it, the way you've described this to me, it sounds like quite a complicated way of putting together an, uh, what is originally started as an LED panel. It's a good question. You know, when I heard about this technology, I thought to myself, hmm, that seems really obvious. Why would you not just put a second cell in and block all the light coming through? That's perfect. That's such a great solution. Mm. Uh, you know, it took us a very long time um, to really get this manufacturing process down to something that is perfect. You know, we have to have these things fusing at a micron level and each pixel has to line up with each other. Uh, so yes, it, it did take a long time for us to bring this out. The concept has been around for a while, um, but we're finally ready to actually bring uh, the product out, which is fantastic. What's the hardest part in introducing a new technology like this to the market? Do you have a time frame where you are hoping people will understand dual cell is in the same level of quality as other high quality panels that are out there? Yeah, it's a good question. I think if you look at the trajectory of most tech companies as they start to uh, succeed in their markets, you're going to see that that uh, lust for having a premium product is going to happen. So of course, you'll, you'll, if you look at the most companies that have started making TVs, they're going to have a history in probably starting at a budget TV and moving up as they mm. gain confidence in the technology. You know, this is something we've been working on for such a long time in the background that we are now really confident to have it here. And I have to say, even though we're in that premium category, and we have been in the premium category for a few years now, that doesn't mean that our prices are going to be at that crazy premium 
and price level. We really still want to democratize the product. We still want to make it accessible as much as possible while still bringing a crazy array of features, especially Julesaw, which has never been seen before in the market. The interesting thing about TVs and your you've got your TVs doing this now is the the price per square inch of panel is is dropping considerably. <laughs> what kind of sizes are we going to get dual, dual cell in the Australian market? Uh, so initially uh, we're announcing um, just a 65 inch. Uh, we're seeing a trend towards 65 inch being sort of the de facto living room size now. And of course, people are hungry for high, bigger sizes as well. Mm. Um, so I don't think you'll see a dual cell at a smaller size than 65. Um, but 65 is definitely where we're starting. And uh, we look forward to announcing different sizes in, in the future. With dual cell, will I get premium refresh rates so that when I'm watching the football or the tennis or I'm not getting that, that juddering of picture as it's jumping across the screen. Is it, do I need to get a dual cell to get the best performance in that area or is it really just the color contrast and the deep, deep blacks on the screen that I'm gonna get improvements on? Uh, really good question. So I guess our entire ULED range this year is using our new HiView Pro engine. And basically that's now using AI upscaling, so you're getting a better picture even if you're watching MASH on live TV. Mm -hmm. um, but they all do have sports mode and game mode. Um, and we've improved those even more this year for better horizontal motion, uh, better reaction to input when you're playing video games, for example. So mm -hmm. uh, any ULED that you purchase, like the Q8, for example, or of course the dual cell, um, is where you're going to start to benefit those. When you step from a Q8 to a dual cell TV, you're really going to a next level in terms of that contrast and that color reproduction. Okay, so what you're saying is the processor that you put in for, for managing that screen refresh and the rendering that's going on there across your range is better this year. So we really shouldn't fall into having issues with, with what I just described with jumpy balls and things like that across the screen. Um, where we're really going to get that benefit of spending in extra money with dual cell is on the blacks and the colors on the screen. That's right. Um, so I guess, you know, the cool thing about dual cell is, and this is an interesting one, TVs in stores now, they all look fantastic. Like mm. we've got to a point now where we're very lucky that every single TV in the store is gonna look pretty good. Um, and I do know that when I walked into the store for the first time and I saw a Hisense OLED TV compared to an LED, it was noticeable. Like mm. it is significantly darker around the black areas. You're going to see that with the dual cell as well. It's one of those products where you need to walk into a store, stand in front of it, and you'll see it immediately. Um, and we're going to be putting out a campaign to you know, really explain and demystify this technology to customers so that we can really position ourselves correctly um, and so that people understand what the technology actually benefits and, and brings to them. Excellent. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about, because you have um, jumped around a bit in terms of the platform that you're using for your TVs. Once upon a time, you ran Android TVs, for example, um, and you've moved away from that, uh, especially this year. Talk to me about your app environment, because I saw the announcement about Foxtel coming to Hisense Televisions. Um, can you explain uh, how that is working and also how I can go and get different apps, for example, for a Hisense TV around the sort of the functionality of me making my own decisions on what apps might be on the TV? I'd like to understand those two bits better. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you hit the nail on the head. Foxtel is is coming to Hisense, which is super exciting. And um, that's one of the uh, of the few apps we've already added this year. And that's not the last one we'll be adding. There'll be more coming as well. Um, mm -hmm. So we've actually been using the Vita platform, uh, which is our own in-house platform, um, for quite a few years now. Um, so since I've been with Hisense, so been three, four, five years now, we've been on our own uh, platform. Uh, we actually moved away from Android as a primary operating system um, a while ago and moved into our own system. Now, the good thing this year is we've actually spun Vita off into its own business unit, which means it has its own oversight, has its own ability uh, to actually go out there and get the apps that we want on our platform. Um, so I think you'll see uh, an increased speed uh, at which the apps are coming to the platform. Um, and of course, when you're actually sitting there in front of the TV, there, there is an app store you can jump into. You can uh, basically download all the apps that you want to put on there. You can delete apps that you don't want to use. Um, but we mm. do pre-package the TV with all of the popular apps so that we think customers will want to use straight away. And with, for example, something like Foxtel, will that auto-populate 
Um, will there be an update, for example, that jumps on the on the screen and says, "Hey, there's some new updates we recommend you take advantage of. Please click OK and then go and go and install." Will it work like that? Yeah, so we've got two different ways that we update our TVs, uh, which wouldn't be dissimilar from most of our competitors. Um, we have a firmware update, which brings new features to the TV. Uh, and then we just have basically passive updates, uh, which can bring apps without having to um, make the customer go through a menu and press a button and accept things. You know, if we've got uh, Foxtel, there's a good chance people are going to want Foxtel, so we can just pop it up on the screen. Um, they can choose to use it if they'd like to. Okay, very good. Um we walked the halls of CES earlier this year and landed at your booth. Uh, sadly, we're not over at uh, Ether in Berlin at this time of the year, but that's just the way it is. We saw you guys had a laser TV on show there. Tell me about uh, laser TV in terms of the sizing that you had at the CES booth. And because I guess it would give an understanding for people watching if they're looking for a dual cell, they're going to get 65 inches, but then if they want something much, much, much bigger, what potential options could they have in the future there? Yeah, 100%. So actually, uh, when it comes to Hisense in Australia, we actually have a few big options. Um, laser absolutely being one of them, and we're continuing um, with laser this year. So yeah. uh, you will see announcements around that pretty soon. At CES, we showed off some crazy sizes. Um, you did. Up to 150-inch uh, laser TVs, which looked fantastic, uh, to be honest. Um, one other thing we're going to be doing very shortly is also bringing a 100-inch LED TV uh, to the market as well. Um, so that's going to be our 100-inch S8 series, um, which we think is going to uh, maybe rock the boat a little bit with a very nice price, but still having amazing features like Dolby Vision, HDR, um, really good motion rate using that new chipset um, that I talked about and, those, and the new apps that we talked about as well. Sounds like you guys are going to have a busy year in TVs. Dual cell, 65 inches. It <laughs> is announced. It is coming to stores, rolling in as we speak. Uh, have a chat to your local retailer if you want to see what they are. If they're not there yet, they'll be there very, very shortly. you got laser announcements coming up. Foxtel populating onto televisions as well. Uh, and we also appreciate you taking us through an explanation on how your app store and service works as well. Chris from Hisense, great to have a chat to you today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.